fixture design course. Our technical presenter here is David Israel from Hawk Ridge Systems. I'm Lars Peterson. I will be managing the dory. So if you have any questions, please just type them into the dory and I'll repeat them over to David. And without any further ado, I'll let him take it from here. Great. Thanks, Lars. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time to come out or, uh, or watch it online. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, fixture design in SolidWorks today. And uh, really, um, you know, the main point of today's topic is uh, taking an existing part assembly, uh, whatever model you may have, and um, referencing off of some existing geometry from those uh, previously designed uh, models. And uh, from that, building up some, some new geometry to be able to uh, hold that component for uh, whatever you might need for manufacturing purposes or testing or whatever might need, uh, whatever might require fixturing. Um, so just kind of a, a general agenda of what I'm going to be going over today is, uh, is importing other file formats. Um, you know, if you've got SolidWorks files, we're, we're going to get to that. And obviously that's a simple case of just either opening an assembly, opening a part, whatever it might be. Um, but uh, you probably have some situations where you're working with designs that came from another CAD system. So we'll look at uh, what you would do in that situation as far as working with them in SolidWorks. And um, also take a look at some uh, techniques that are available for working with those uh, imported uh, files. Um, a lot of people, if you don't have a feature history of a model, they um, might not know that there are still some techniques that are available in SOLIDWORKS for working with those designs, even though there's no feature history. And um, then we'll look at uh, just inside of SOLIDWORKS, some assembly techniques that are available for designing fixtures and, uh, and then some part modeling techniques as well. And then finally, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll touch on the design library a little bit. This is something that I, I think would be useful when you're designing fixtures to be able to uh, reuse components or reuse um, uh, design elements for future designs. So the design library is a, a great tool for that. So let me um, let me jump over to SolidWorks here, and uh, and we'll start with importing another file format. So say I'm going to go to my open uh, dialog here and uh, just looking for this step file. So let's take a look at, at what happens when I open up this step file. So SOLIDWORKS is going to do some translation and it's going to open up the, uh, the step file. Um, there are some options for how it opens. These can be found in the system options if you go to import uh, down towards the bottom. And um, there are different categories here for different file formats. Uh, but just for the, uh, the general case, uh, so you can see here there are different ways that you can have it sort of recognize the geometry that exists in the file. Do you want it to bring in um, surfaces and solids? Uh, do you want it to bring in curves or sketches from the existing model? Um, and then when you bring in the, uh, the solids and surfaces, do you want it to try forming a solid or do you want it to bring in just the, the surfaces and so forth? Um, so you can uh, kind of work with these import options if, uh, you know, sometimes you might find that that the, the model's not coming in as cleanly as you'd like it to be. So maybe adjusting some of these might give you a better import. Um, or, you know, if you're looking for a different entity to bring in also, you can adjust these as well. Uh, also, I'll just mention, um, so with SOLIDWORKS 2017, there was a new enhancement that was introduced, the um, 3D interconnect. So if I go to the file format of Inventor, Katia, Creo, NX, and Solid Edge. Um, so these are my options for 3D interconnect. And um, this is uh, it's not really a, a translation. Um, it's, it's really just bringing in that other geometry into SOLIDWORKS and you can just work with it directly without actually having to go through a translation process. Um, so this is something that, you know, may also be beneficial for you in SOLIDWORKS 2017 or 2018. 
but we'll look at the case with uh, working with a, a neutral file, file format like a stat. So um, one of the first things that you would typically do when you're bringing in imported geometry like this is use this import diagnostics tool. And this is available here on the evaluate tab of the command manager. You can also get to it if I right click on this first imported item in the, uh, the feature tree, I can get to import diagnostics that way as well. And um, what this does is it runs through uh, a series of operations um, to, to try to identify any faulty geometry uh, that might have come through with, with the imported file. Uh, and these are things like, um, you know, maybe some, some edges didn't line up quite uh, the way they should have, or maybe there's a, a gap between faces that was a little bit larger than it should have been. Um, anytime you're working with with translation between CAD formats, it's um, it's really uh, analogous to you know translating between different languages. Um, so uh, you know you talk about somebody trying to translate a a book uh, from English to uh, Spanish or French, whatever. Um, there there are always going to be some things that you know there isn't quite a one-to-one -one exact translation for certain things. So that's why you, you tend to end up with these little artifacts or, um, or faulty entities when you're dealing with imported geometry. So in this case, with this file, there are three uh, faces that are identified as, as being faulty for one reason or another. Um, if I hover over it, it gives me a little tool tip that explains what went wrong, but uh, sometimes, like you can see here, it just says general geometry problem, which um, isn't very helpful. <laughs> I, I don't really know exactly what to do with that. Thank you. Um, you know, it, it doesn't give me uh, an exact fix or series of operations that I can do to fix that. So that's, that's what I'll show you here is, you know, how to work through a situation like this um, when it's, uh, it's not really obvious what, what to do to correct that. Uh, and then we got a couple other faces here that are shown as faulty as well. And um, so with this import diagnostics tool, usually the easiest thing to do is just click this attempt to heal all button down towards the bottom. And when I do that, um, so SolidWorks is going to run through and try to repair any of those things that I mentioned before, any gaps, any um, you know faulty edges, whatever it might find. And um, so it is able to repair this. Um, the other one uh has has gone away as uh as a faulty um item um so the only thing that we're left with is just this small face here is still shown as uh being faulty so <clears throat> um what i can do if uh if i really want to get rid of that fault in that geometry um i can work through some some basic surfacing techniques to really try to replace that face um, you guys are probably aware, maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, so right now what I have is a, is a solid, um, solid body. And what I can do is if I go over to my surfaces tab here on the command manager, um, there's this delete face command. So let's say, you know, I have this faulty face. I want to go ahead and get rid of it. So I'll just click delete uh, and I'll just select that face. And when I click OK, so you can see now the face is, um, is surrounded by blue edges. Um, blue is just the default color in SolidWorks to let you know that those are open surface edges. Um, so what's happened by deleting this face is it is actually converted it from a solid body into a surface body. So the whole thing now is a surface body. And, um, you know, I could try to go through and, and maybe do some surface modeling and, and rebuild that face. Um, but if you guys have taken our surface modeling class, you, you may remember that a face like this with three sides. Uh, so it has a, a singularity at, at any of these points. And it's, it's not clean geometry, really, to work with as a surface model. So if, if I tried to just build this up as a single surface, uh, I'm typically going to end up with maybe some waviness in the surface um, or something that might not look 100% uh, clean. So in this case, if I want to get really clean geometry, what I can do is, you know, we really, we're really we dealing with uh, an area where we have three fillets that are just uh, intersecting or, or merging together here. Um, so maybe 
you know, it might be simple enough that I could just recreate those fillets and just let SolidWorks uh, redo that triangular face for me as part of the fillet command. Um, so what I can do then is I'm gonna go to delete face again. And um, actually before I do that, <clears throat> uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna rebuild uh, these surrounding faces essentially. So I'll select these and I'm going to use my offset surface command. And offset surface, you can see there's a, a dimension that's in here immediately when I go into the command. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to um, duplicate these faces as surface bodies. And it's offsetting them by the value that's in the property manager here. Um, so if I want to just duplicate these faces, I can set this dimension to zero. And you'll notice when I do that, it's going to change the title of this command from offset surface. When I hit enter, it's now called copy surface because uh, that's what it's doing basically, just copying those surfaces or faces. And I'll click OK. <clears throat> and now you can see in my tree, I have four surface bodies, the original one, and then the copies of those three faces that I selected. So I'm going to hide the, uh, the new surface bodies that I created. And um, what I'd also like to do is, is just measure these fillets just to make sure that when I recreate them, that I'm doing it at the same uh, size that uh, the original model used. So there's a, a tool that I can use for that. It's called um, check. And so it's here. I, I can also get to it from uh, my evaluate tab of the command manager. And in order to get the uh, the radii for those fillets, um, so I just want to check this option of uh, medium, minimum radius of curvature. And then I'll go through and um, select uh, faces here, just changes to selected items. Anyway, not sure why uh, that check command is not uh, giving me the option that I want, but I know what these uh, what the sizes are anyway, so I'm just going to skip ahead here. And uh, what I'm going to do, since I have these surface bodies copied, I'll just uh, delete out um, the, the geometry that I don't want anymore using the delete face command. And I'm going to select all these faces. And now I'll, um, I'll show these other uh, copied surfaces. And I'm gonna hide the, uh, the main body. And now what I'd like to do is uh, just merge these together and create a new fillet between them. So in order to do that, uh, when you're working with surface geometry, I need to extend the edges of these so that they overlap and then trim them together. Um, so I'm going to use the extend surface command here. And I'm just going to select uh, these edges and extend them by uh, like five millimeters, just enough that they overlap one another. And same thing with the other bodies. Select these edges here. And same one here. Select those edges, extend those. So now all of them overlap each other. And what we'll do at this point is use the trim surface command. And I'm just gonna do a mutual trim and select these three faces. And I'm going to choose to uh, keep these main sections. Uh, so as I click them, they're, they're removed from the graphics area, but they're being selected here. And um, 
when I click OK, so now you can see that the uh, the three faces or three separate surface bodies that I had have now been uh, knit together or, or trimmed into a single surface body. And I'll go ahead and um, and show the other body as well. And so what I'd like to do now is uh, add in my filleted faces. So I'm just going to use the fillet command. And I'm going to select uh, these edges here. And the size is going to be uh, 2.8. But um, this one was actually a larger size. So I'm going to choose a multi-radius fillet. And I'm going to change this to 3 millimeters. OK, so now I have my fillets. And um, last thing that I want to do is just merge these surface bodies together. Uh, by using the knit command. I'm going to select uh, these two surfaces and choose create solid and click OK. And so now we've come back to a scenario where we have a surface body once again. And that face has been recreated. Um, there's no more uh, faulty geometry and uh, um, you know we don't have to deal with, like I mentioned before, any kind of uh, oddities with with the face if I had tried building it up by using some of these other uh, surface tools. Um, so that's uh, that's one technique that you can use when you're working with imported geometry. If you find that you have some uh, remaining faulty entities, faces, edges, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and um, uh, hopefully you saw that, uh, you know, most of what I was working with there was uh, were fairly simple commands. It was really just duplicating existing faces and then uh, you know trimming and knitting them together um, so it's all it's all fairly simple stuff um, did anybody have any questions on any of the steps that I went over here Um, no, with the uh, extend surface, yeah. So the question was, uh, with extend surface, can you, uh, could I have done them all in the same command? But with extend surface, it's just uh, one body at a time. <clears throat> OK. Um, so I'll show you uh, another technique. Just uh, if you were to bring in imported geometry like this, um, like I mentioned, you know, if, if you don't have a feature history, um, there are still some techniques that you can use. Uh, a lot of uh, what you can do is going to be on your surfaces command here. So as it kind of gets into sort of working with a little bit of a advanced techniques, uh, you know, surface modeling, I guess, in and of itself is, is on the advanced side. Uh, but just going back to this delete face command, so there are some other things that you can do with it. Um, what I did before was just the delete option, but if I if we look at one of these other ones, delete and patch. Um, so let's say for example, you know I brought in this geometry and it has this uh, countersunk hole here or counterboard hole, and then it has a, a bit of a boss on the other side. And um, and let's say with uh, you know what I want to be creating now off of this body, um, I I don't. Uh, I don't want to have any references to um, this uh, this whole feature here. Um, so uh, what you can do, for example, I can just select the faces that make up this boss and the hole on the other side. So I've selected all of these faces here. And I'm going to use this delete and patch command. And when I click OK, so you can see it, it, it looks as if, you know, that feature was never created. So what SolidWorks does, it's removing the faces that I selected and then it's patching over uh, whatever holes remain in the geometry. Um, so it's a nice automated uh, tool or technique that you can use to try to, to remove geometry without having feature history. Um, one other thing that I'll point out is, uh, 
So I use the import diagnostics tool before you can see now it's grayed out. And that's because import diagnostics is only available when the imported feature is the only item in the tree. So once you start adding additional items into the feature tree, uh, you're no longer able to use the import diagnostics tool. So you should use it immediately as soon as you open up an imported body. Um, all right, let's uh, take a look at a, another example. So this is from uh, an IGIS file, another neutral file type. And um, <clears throat> so again, this is uh, another situation where maybe you know I'm working with uh, a file where I don't have access to the uh, original model. And um, let's say I want to make a, a slight modification to it uh, before I, I design my fixture for it. Um, so a couple of other techniques that you can use. What I'd like to do is, is I want to have this tab uh, facing the other way, and I want to, to move it slightly. So I can use um, <clears throat> a, uh, a split command to split it into multiple bodies, and then I can just use some body operations to move, um, move one of the bodies around. So to do that, I'm going to create a new plane. And it's going to be parallel to the front plane. And then I want it also intersecting at um, this vertex right through that line. I'm going to use that plane. And then uh, I'll go to Insert Features and Split. And I'll go ahead and click Cut Part. And I'm going to check these, uh, which, which says that I want to keep both of these new bodies in my file. I'll click OK. I'm just going to hide this plane. So now if we look at the solid bodies folder, you can see we have two separate bodies. And like I mentioned, uh, there's some body operations that you can use. If I go to Insert, and features, um, there's move copy, uh, there are things like delete body. Um, so a couple uh, different tools that you can use when you're, when you're working with bodies themselves as opposed to features. So uh, first what I'll do is um, I wanna move this and I'm gonna be uh, rotating it to start with. Like I said, I want that tab to be pointed up and sit down. Um, so I'm not gonna be copying this. I'm just going to select this as the body that I want to uh, work with. And I'm going to use the, uh, the rotate section here. I just want to rotate about Z. I'm going to do a 180 degree rotation here. So that'll flip that. And uh, then I can go back to... Uh, move or, or copy. And um, as opposed to just, uh, you know, entering in uh, some delta values for translation or rotation, you can also work with constraints. And this is basically the same as using mates in an assembly. Um, so what I'll do is just select a couple of different references, for example, I'll choose this as my body to move, and I'm going to select top face here and the top face there and set them to coincident. Click add. So you can see it's basically adding a mate. <clears throat> and um, then I also want to uh, do a, a distance value. Um, so in this case, I'll select this face and this face and I'll set these to uh, a distance of Do distance of uh, two inches, so you know it's going to be slightly further uh, from the original position. I'll click OK, 
And then just to uh, close it off, you know, I can do just a simple extrusion between those. So I'll do a, a sketch on this face. And um, with the face selected here, I can click convert entities. So it's just gonna grab the, uh, the outer boundary of that face. And I'll exit my sketch, go to my extruded boss feature and just do a boss, <clears throat> you can say uh, up to surface and select this surface. And if I have the merge result uh, option checked, then click okay. So it now merged it together and now we're back to a situation where I have a single solid body. Um, so, you know, I, I've made a, a change to the geometry from where I originally brought it in uh, and again, you know, I, I don't have to have any existing feature history. I can just use those other tools uh, to be able to manipulate the geometry. Any questions on that example? If you weren't separating them, Uh, so the question was, if I if I wasn't uh, separating them, how would I um, merge them back into one body? Um, so let's uh, take a quick look at that. I'm just going to suppress that extrusion that I created, and I'll uh, make a change to this. I'm going to go back in and edit the feature here, and instead of doing this um, distance mate. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to grab these, so yeah, I think I can. Uh, I'm going to select this face and this face, and I'm going to say coincident and flip alignment. So now they're lined back up. Basically, what's happened is I, I just rotated it. Uh, that was the only thing that's been done here. So we have two solid bodies. And what you could do if I wanted to now uh, merge these together into a single solid body, I can go to Insert, Features, and Combine. So this combine tool has a few different operations you can do. I'm going to choose the add operation, and I'll select uh, the two bodies. And I'll click OK. And now they've been merged or combined into a, a single body. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I'm using SolidWorks 2017 right now. Um, and I, everything that I've been showing so far uh, has been around for a while. Uh, none of it is uh, our new enhancements. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at, um, uh, we looked at importing geometry, working with imported geometry, and uh, now we'll take a look at some assembly techniques uh, for designing fixtures in SolidWorks. Um, <clears throat> so to start with, uh, let me open up, uh, I'll just uh, create a new assembly. And I'm just going to bring in uh, this tooling plate. I'm um, just kind of a, a base if I'm going to be setting up some kind of fixture. And um, now let me also bring in um, some, some part that I want to hold down. Uh, so let me grab this one here. And I'm going to uh, just rotate this over like this. And I'll just kind of uh, place it in a general area where uh, I want it to be positioned. So 
Uh -oh. It's going to mate up the uh, the top plane with the front plane of the assembly. And uh, right plane and this right plane will do some kind of distance between these. And let's also put some distance here. Or actually, maybe something like this, some distance off of the, the top surface of this plate. So um, <clears throat> when you're working in an assembly in SolidWorks and you, uh, you know, I've got a couple parts in here and um, what I'm going to be doing is, you know, designing a, a couple of new supports um, to hold this, uh, hold this part in place. And um, if I'm going to be referencing off of existing geometry from these other parts, uh, what happens is I'm going to be creating what are called external references. Uh, between the different files. And um, when you create external references, so you now have you now have a link between the files that SolidWorks needs to maintain in order to uh, make sure that the features that were designed in the context of the assembly are going to be updated correctly in the future if there are any changes um, to the assembly or to the the other parts in the assembly. And um, what that does is it, it adds some extra complexity just to the file management of those files uh, because there's this you know, link that that's all it has to maintain. So um, I think typically the, uh, the general uh, recommended practice is it, it's fine to, to work using that method to create external references, but then once you have finished your design and you no longer need to uh, reference off of those other parts, it's best to break uh, or remove those external references. Um, I shouldn't say break, actually, because uh, that's that's a specific thing uh, that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but <clears throat> so, for example, let's say I want to create a new part. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, save this assembly. And we'll just... Uh, some name here. And uh, so now I'm going to be saving this uh, new part that I'm creating. And um, when you're creating a new part in the context of the assembly, uh, so you might notice that next to the mouse pointer, there's a little green check mark. And what that means is right now what it's trying to do is, is it's actually going to be putting me into a sketch on the front plane on the new part. Um, and so with the green check mark, what it's asking me to do is select some face or plane. And when I do that, it's going to be aligned with the front plane of the new part that I'm creating. So for example, I could select the top face of uh, the base plate here. And um, you may notice, uh, it's kind of hard to see in here. It, do you know um, uh, the people that are watching online, oh, are they seeing, they're not seeing that green bar on the top here. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, just want to make sure that everybody can see the command manager. Because uh, when, uh, when I'm working in context of an assembly like this, so I, I've created a new part, and a few things you can see. The new part, the features are shown in blue, whereas those existing parts that were already in there uh, are shown in black. Um, so that's an indication that I'm actually editing uh, this new part that's down at the bottom of the tree. Uh, a couple of other indications you have that you're working uh, or editing that part is that uh, edit component is pushed in on the, the top left here. Um, I'm also in a sketch, so the exit sketch button is pushed in as well. Um, so those are, those are the indications that I get that I'm actually working in context of this assembly. 
And um, like I said, if I if I want to, you know, pick up some geometry that exists in these other parts, um, I can do that. You know, the same that that I would in uh, in a part file if I was just uh, waking up an edge of a, another feature in the part um, to be able to to find or locate the uh, the center point there. Um, so the same thing here. Just uh, create a circle and dimension it to some diameter. So I have this relation, this coincident relation uh, between uh, the axis of the hole here for that other part and the center point of the circle that I created. And if I go to uh, display and delete relations, so you can see here on the list that um, diameter one, this is the dimension that I added for the diameter. Uh, but the coincident relation, it has this, this little indication to the side of it, uh, sort of looks like an arrow pointing to the right. And that lets me know that there's an external reference uh, for that relation. So it needs the assembly in order to identify where that uh, center point is gonna be located. And you can see down at the bottom, uh, it gives you some information about uh, the external reference or the entities that are included in this relation. Um, so I'll uh, just kind of leave it at that for now that that's an external reference. And, and later on, we'll get to um, you know, how to remove the external reference, like I said, which would be the, the ideal situation after you're done with, uh, with creating the model to go back and remove the external references. So I've got this circle, and I'm just going to do a simple extrusion. And uh, let's say once again, I, I want to reference off of some existing geometry here. Um, so I'll say up to surface, and I'll just go up to this face here. And I'll click OK. And so now if we look in the tree, um, the same thing that we saw with that sketch relation, there's the, the same little indication that there's an external reference, a little arrow pointing off to the right. And so you can see uh, both the sketch and the feature have external references. And uh, so that's because when I created the feature, I chose up to surface. So it needs the assembly in order to figure out, you know, where that surface is located in order to um, actually create the feature in the new part. And um, so obviously we've got an interference here. Um, there's uh, a tool that, that's useful to use at the assembly level um, for uh, trying to, uh, I guess, copy or um, you know, make use of the existing surfaces on this uh, door handle bezel part. And um, the tool is the, uh, the cavity tool. Um, so I can find that if I go to Insert, Features, and Cavity. And uh, <clears throat> so the design component uh, that I want to use is the bezel here. So that's what I'm going to select. And uh, you can do some scaling also. Uh, you know, if I wanted to um, kind of create a little bit of clearance between the two parts, I could scale them. Um, with the cavity feature, uh, the scaling is um, uh, sometimes you'll get a, a good result out of it. Sometimes you might not, just depending on the geometry, like this one here, because uh, we've got this hole in the middle of the you know the circular feature. Um, the the scaling isn't isn't quite perfect, so I'm I'm just going to leave it at, at zero for this feature. Um, but when I click OK. So I now get this dialogue asking me which bodies do I want to keep uh, because you know the the original circular extrusion that I created um, it protrudes through in the outside here so I have several different bodies that are actually created by this cavity cut I'm going to choose selected bodies and um, 
this uh, first one is a main body. That's that's the one that I, I want to end up keeping. Um, the rest of them, you know, if I kind of scroll through them, you can see, you know, what individual bodies would be created by this cut. Uh, but I, I don't want to keep any of these, so I'm not going to be checking them. Um, so the only one that I want to keep is just the first one. I, and I check the box next to that, and then I click OK. And now it uh, creates that cavity feature. Um, you can kind of see as I click on it, um, the uh, sort of silhouette here you can see matches up with the shape of this uh, door handle bezel. Um, and if I hide the door handle bezel part, now we can see what the top surface of this extrusion looks like. So it, it perfectly matches the shape of that door handle bezel part. Um, so this is something you know that you could use if you're designing some kind of support. Um, this would you know match up perfectly with with the part. Um, if I if I then wanted to you know create some some clearance between these two parts, um, I could do in this situation you know what what might work nicely is uh, is kind of similar to what I was doing in in the first example when I was working with that imported body where I I copied the faces and you know did some operation to them. Um, so in this case, if I wanted to kind of do the same thing, um, so let's say what I would do is uh, I could use the, the offset surface command like I did before. Uh, but this time, instead of, you know, previously I'd set this to zero and I just did a, a pure copy surface. Um, I do actually want to do an offset this time because I want a little bit of clearance. So I'll set this to, uh, you know, some small clearance amount. Uh, like a, a ten thousandths of an inch, something like that, and um, and maybe I'll just select you know a couple of the uh, of the main faces or, or surfaces of this, and you know let's say if I want to leave some some clearance in here, uh, maybe I won't select those faces, and just make sure that I'm offsetting the uh, the correct direction. So I'll, I'll flip it by clicking this button here. Some offsetting to the other side. And I can go ahead and, um, and hide the solid body now. So you can see the, uh, the surface geometry that I created. And um, <clears throat> so now I, if I just want to uh, you know, merge these together, it's a similar operation to what I did before. I can extend these surfaces. Uh, so this here, if I want to, uh, you know, bring this down a little bit. So again, I'll do distance, same surface like I did before. And um, just some value to make sure that they overlap each other. And uh, same thing over here, if I select these faces in here. Again, just want to make sure they overlap. Something like that. And then I can uh, trim these up together just like I did before. I'll keep those. So I get a Get them trimmed together like that, and then I can, um, you know, add uh, like a little fillet between them, sort of similar to what you saw me do with that that first imported part, and just create um, some small fillet in here like that. And um, then I could maybe. Uh, Use this planar surface just to tap off uh, the top of that surface. Um, so again, just uh, you know, working through some uh, some basic surface modeling techniques just to kind of get the, the geometry that you want. Um, go ahead and uh, now hide these surface bodies and show the solid body. 
And so for this one now, uh, what I probably want to do is go back to my delete face command and get rid of these faces now. Something like that. And uh, just like I did before, I can uh, extend this, these faces up. Now I'll show these back again. And I believe these all overlap. I can go back to my trim command and now uh, just try trimming all of these back together. And I'm going to have to extend this one out also. So let me go back to my extend command and I'll just extend this out by a little bit. And now I'll go back into my trim command. And now uh, with this trim, since this is creating an enclosed uh, volume. I have an option down at the bottom to say create solid. So when I do that, click OK, and now uh, we're back to a solid body. So same general uh, sequence of steps as you saw me do at the, the very beginning, um, just to create a little bit of an offset uh, between the, um, the door handle bezel and uh, the new part that I'm creating. So if I show this again, uh, so you can see there's a little bit of gap there. And there would be uh, just a little bit of gap down on the bottom as well since I, I did a, an offset there. So that, that can, you know, accommodate for uh, variations in, in uh, you know, manufacturing due to tolerances if you're trying to uh, use this support on, a, on several different parts. Um, any questions on, on that yeah, would you example? Yeah, yeah. So I guess the uh, question is, you know, if I if I didn't want to do exactly what I did here, and maybe just use some of the geometry, but not all of it. Yeah. yeah so I I could use uh, the delete um, face command that I did before, or um, you know, I might just use some some sketch geometry instead of uh, actually selecting. Um, the body to do a cavity. Um, I'll show uh, another example here, maybe on on this um, uh, the hole in the front. We could take a look at uh, at using sketch geometry instead of doing the the cavity command. Um, so let's let's do that now. Um, let's, uh, were there any other questions with uh, this example so far? Okay, so um, I'll do uh, just like I did before. I'm going to I'm going to go to new part and uh, give it a name. And again, so I have that green check next to the mouse pointer. It's asking me for uh, a face or a plane to begin the sketch on. I'll do just like I did before. I'll select the top face of this um, the tooling plate. And so now let's say, um, you know, I, I just want to have something where uh, the front of this is just kind of resting on it. I, I don't want to, 
over constrain it. So, you know, I, I don't really want to have it uh, matching up with the, the full contour here. You would just want to have kind of one, one little support point in the front. Uh, the rear would kind of be my, uh, my main uh, constraint where, um, you know, I've got it pretty much locked down there. I just want to have a little bit of uh, additional support in the front. Um, so just for the, the main block, um, I'll just do a, a simple uh, rectangular shape. Just something like that. And um, I'll do an extrusion. Uh, let's see. And in this case, uh, maybe, I guess uh, I could do up to surface. Um, actually, no, that won't work. Uh, I'll have to do uh, something like up to vertex, um, or I could just you know enter in some blind value, but uh, something like that. And. Um, and now let's say I want to uh, just create a little bit of a boss that, that comes through uh, this hole here, just kind of block it, prevent it from uh, rotating around the, uh, the back support. Um, so in that case, I'm going to do a sketch on this face. And now, um, you know, let's say I, I just want to pick up on some existing geometry uh, like this. So I can do an offset entities command here, uh, you know, to give it a little bit of clearance, just like we saw on the other support. Um, so let's say I just uh, want to give it like a, a couple hundreds and uh, reverse it, go in the other direction. So in this case, you get this, uh, the offset entities has this relation that comes along with it. And um, again, it's an external reference, just like we saw with the, uh, with the other part. So do the same thing here. I'm going to offset. We'll go in the other direction. And then, um, you know, I could do uh, whatever treatment to extend the entire length. You know, I can shape. Uh, I could, you know, just kind of close it off with a couple of other um, lines here. Uh, let me go drag this like that. Not going to bother with um, fully dimensioning this. Get that closed. So. Uh, so something like that, maybe I'll, uh, you know, round off the corners here. We'll get a, a sketch shape that looks something like this. And then I can um, just go ahead and create some kind of an extrusion. I don't know, something like that, that, you know, you might be able to, to clamp down uh, something like this, just prevent that part from spinning around. I don't know. I'm not a fixture designer, so <laughs> you guys are probably looking at this thinking, oh, my God, that's terrible. But you get the idea. We're just uh, kind of referencing off of some existing geometry and... Um, so that's, you know, a different situation, probably a, a more manual using a cavity feature. So it's, um, it's not going to give you exact geometry, but um, something, you know, similar using some of the same edges or some of the, the features that exist in that other part. Does that make sense or any questions on this? Okay, so um, now uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, what steps would you have to go through if, uh, like I, I showed you before, we've got these external references and um, 
what would you need to do in order to get rid of those? Um, so you could do this either at the assembly level here, or um, if I had the, the part opened up in its own window, um, I could also do it here as well. Uh, where'd you go? So for example, if we, if we just start with this second one here, um, like we saw, you know, I've got those relations um, that were created by doing an offset from existing edges. And um, in order to uh, get rid of them or get rid of the external references, I could just delete those relations that were created before. So you can do that just by clicking on them and hitting delete on the keyboard. And now if I go to display and delete relations, <laughs> Um, so, okay, this one you can see is still here. So this is my only remaining external reference for this sketch. Um, so I can, I can do the same thing. Um, but you can see if you just want to limit this list to any external references, um, so I could change this to external. It's just going to show me whatever as external references. So I'll do the same thing, just select that relation and hit delete on the keyboard. Uh, or uh, you can also do it from the property manager if you're in this display delete relations command, you can click delete to get rid of the relation. And um, so I've got uh, my sketch now. Um, let me go ahead and uh, actually before I exit out of this, uh, there's a, another nice tool. I, I don't know. I think most people aren't aware of this, but um, you know, I had built it up before, created this sketch without fully defining it. We just kind of threw some sketch entities in there. But if you go to tools and dimensions, there's this fully defined sketch tool. And I can use this to uh, add whatever dimensions or relations I need in here in order to fully define the sketch. Um, so it, it makes it a lot easier than, you know, me having to go through and just manually add a bunch of dimensions. Um, so you can specify which type of relations you want this tool to be creating automatically. And you can also specify how the dimensions are going to be placed, whether they're chain, baseline, or ordinate. Um, so, and then you can select uh, what point is going to be used as your, uh, your baseline or your kind of datum uh, for the dimensions. So for both of these, I'm just going to select the, the vertex um, down at the bottom left. And then you can tell it where you want the dimensions to be placed, either above, below, left, or right of the sketch. And when I click OK, so now it adds in uh, whatever dimensions or relations I need in order to fully define the sketch. So now you can see all the geometry change from blue to black. It's, uh, it's now fully defined. And um, so here, if I exit the sketch, um, so now you can you can see for that sketch uh, sketch two, it no longer has that external reference arrow on it, and um, same thing with the boss, it, it's no longer externally referenced to the assembly. Um, so this is that's a technique that you'd use to uh, remove the external references between a part and the assembly. Yeah, I'm sorry. The fully defined? Yeah. So uh, the question was, uh, where do you find the fully defined sketch tool? So it's if you're in a sketch, if I go to tools and then dimensions, it's uh, right here, fully defined sketch. Um, so that's the method you would use to, to remove the external references. Um, typically, it's going to be uh, your dimensions or relations in your sketch. Um, like we saw before, it could also be uh, in a feature if you use the uh, you know up to vertex, up to surface, 
offset from surface, any of these where you're you know, referencing some other geometry for your end condition, um, these can also create external references. So in that case, um, if I wanted to get rid of the, the external reference for this uh, feature, um, so I can uh, figure out you know, what the, the depth or the height is of, um, of the extrusion. It was uh, down here on the status bar at the very bottom. Uh, it shows that it's 3.0043 inches. So what I can do is edit the feature and instead of doing up to vertex, I'll just change it to blind and I'll set this to three inches. It was basically three inches with, you know, a couple thousands uh, difference. So um, let's set it to three and click OK. So now the external reference has been removed from that feature as well. Um, so this part now no longer has any other external references. Um, you can find external references if you go to the file dropdown and you go to uh, find references. And um, so in this case, there aren't any, so it, it's not showing me anything else in the list here. Um, all right, let me jump back to the assembly and uh, just a couple of other things on external references. So if I open up this part in its own window, um, so this one, let's do this. All right, so this one does have external references. And if we look here and go back to file, find references, so you can see it has the assembly listed here, which like I said before, it, this part needs to be able to access that assembly in order to figure out what the geometry of this part is. Um, so one of the other things you can do with external references, um, I can right click on any of these features where it shows a little uh, external reference arrow next to it. If I right click, I can go to list external refs here. So this, uh, this will give me some more detail about that specific external reference. You know, what is it exactly referencing? Um, what feature, uh, where did it come from, and so forth. And it'll give you some information about whether it's in context or not. And that means, you know, does is SolidWorks able to uh, access the assembly? Basically, if the assembly was not open, uh, then you'd probably see an out of context uh, listed here until you open up the assembly. And um, so a couple of things that you can do with external references if you if you're not going to remove them like I just showed you by you know deleting relations in a sketch or something like that. Um, so there are a couple of buttons down here. You can break an external reference or you can lock an external reference. And um, breaking external references is a, is an irreversible operation. So once it's broken, it cannot be uh, put back in context. Um, whereas lock all is reversible, so you can lock an external reference. And then if you decide later on that you want to unlock it and you want to, you know, have it update, uh, so you can do that. You can lock and unlock. Um, so because of that, because break all is a, a permanent operation in almost all situations, you should use lock instead of break. Um, I don't, do you guys have like, are there standards that say that you cannot lock references? Or no, you do you... Okay. Yeah, it's are you? There's, if you have a master model, of course. So, okay, are you actually using the break command here? Or you mean by just going in and deleting the, the references? No, some people added it there in a okay. slow way, but um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Right. So yeah, the the you know recommended practice is if you're releasing something, you don't want to have the external references there. Um, so these these commands are available if you're not going to go through the the full steps like I showed you of uh, of actually deleting or removing uh, external references. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at something else. Uh, so let's say I'm going to create a, a new assembly. And I'll bring in uh, this part here. Um, just as an example, and um, Uh, made this up just to make sure it's in the position that I want. Okay. And I'll go ahead and save this assembly. <clears throat> and um, so let's say, you know, there's a few holes here. Uh, let's say I want to reference off of those holes. I want to create some kind of uh, supporting fixture that matches that, that hole pattern. Uh, I want to, you know, place some, some uh, mounting screws in there. And, um, and maybe this is something where it's a, a common hole pattern. You know, maybe I use this on, on several different uh, models. Um, what I could do at the assembly level, um, again, if I'm creating a new part, uh, or call it anything, I select the top plane to start my sketch. And um, we'll just do a simple rectangle. Just Something like this, some kind of base plate. And uh, now I want to, uh, to add some holes into this. So I'm gonna do another sketch on here. And um, so what I could do is uh, use convert entities and you know pick up these holes here. Uh, um, for now, I'm, I'm just going to pick those up and click OK. And if I hide uh, the foot, so you can see I, I'm creating sketch geometry that's based off of the holes that exist in the other part. And um, so this is also creating external references. Um, so all of these on edge relations are external relations. If we look here, you can see it has the same little indication. Um, so another tool or, or technique that you can use if, um, if you don't want to create those external references, rather than creating them and then having to go back in and remove them later, uh, there's a, a button here on the command manager that says no external references. And if I push this, it will prevent SolidWorks from creating the external reference in the first place. So I'll go ahead and push that. And I'm going to uh, show this part again. And now if I do the same thing I did before with converting entities, uh, so now when I select these edges, And I click OK. So I get this message saying, your selection is an external reference. Because of the current setting, reference will be automatically broken. Um, so click OK. I'll get it twice because I have two edges that I selected. And um, you can see, hide this again. So those two 
Uh, new circles that have been created are shown in blue. Uh, there's no relation next to them, so it didn't actually create these external reference relations. The geometry, the sketch geometry is in the correct location. Um, so it, it is exactly the, the geometry that I want to use. It just doesn't have those external references uh, created. Um, so what I could do is uh, I could use the same tool I did before, go to tools, dimensions, and fully defined sketch. And um, in this case, uh, maybe we want to base this off of the origin. And I'll click OK. So I get, you know, dimensions for uh, these, uh, the, the last two holes that I created. Um, I don't have dimensions for the first ones because they have those external reference, the on edge relations on them. So uh, in order to define them, it, it doesn't require the dimensions. So it's what I did. Yeah, right. So uh, it created these these equal relations instead of dimensioning the diameter. Um, and that's uh, if I delete these. Yeah, so that, that was just because in the uh, fully defined sketch tool, I, I had all these relations selected. Um, so if I you know didn't want to have those relations, I could turn off uh, the equal radius relations so then it wouldn't have created those um, or you know in this situation what I can do is just uh, add a dimension for the uh, the radii or the diameters um, so you know something like that um, and yeah you know if I didn't want to have external re external references in that sketch at all um, obviously, I would have started with pushing this button at the beginning, but just you know, showing you guys the difference between those uh, having the button pushed and, and not having it pushed. Um, <clears throat> so I, I could use this to now um, create a cut. And so I, I could get uh, you know whole pattern. Uh, that matches up with the the holes on this part here, um, and like I mentioned, you know, let's say yeah, you might have a situation where that whole pattern is used elsewhere, and maybe you want to reuse it. Um, so an, another nice um, tool or a nice technique that you can use to not have external references is to actually use a block um, to. Uh, identify or create the sketch um, to place those holes. And a block, um, what I could do if I select the sketch, I can go to Tools, Blocks, and Save. And um, so I can save this block. Uh, I'm just going to save it onto the desktop somewhere. So now that block, um, let's say I create a new assembly. And um, and I want to reuse that uh, uh, the sketch geometry or the block. Um, so let me just go ahead and hide this, and I'll create a new part. And do the same uh, same thing I did before. I'll just create a. Simple little rectangular shape, extrusion. And um, so I'll go into a sketch on the top face, just like I did before. And this time, uh, I want to bring in the block that I created before. So I'll go to Tools, Blocks, and Insert. And just look for that on my desktop. So I have, you know, the that whole pattern uh, that I had created before. 
and uh, really doesn't matter uh, where I have it. But um, I now have that that block is placed in here uh, to function as my sketch. And um, if I now hide this, I can you know use this to create a cut just like I did before. And so by using uh, the block in my sketch, so I don't have any external references that I have to deal with. So this, that's another technique that you can use to avoid creating external references. Um, any questions at this point? Yeah. You mentioned earlier <laughs> yeah, so the question is, um, you know, what's the difference between breaking external references and, and deleting them or removing them like I showed before? Um, I mean, functionally, there's, there's not really a difference between it, but uh, with breaking external references, uh, there, there's still a little artifact in the file that will show that there was an external reference that's now broken, so it's it's cleaner to remove them completely by going in and actually taking the time to delete them. Um, so that that would be you know the ideal situation that'll give you the the cleanest model without any traces of you know something left in there that's that's not even really accessible anymore. But yeah. Yeah, so that, that's another thing, just uh, repeating. Uh, if you're going to break references so you still have uh, an artifact in file management, it'll show you uh, in the where used that uh, it's being used in assembly, but it's not actually being used there. It's just the external references still pointing to that assembly. OK. Um, so now uh, let's take a look at some part modeling techniques that you can use to, um, to create fixtures in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so this is um, you know, similar to what we saw before with using this cavity feature um, to be able to, to replicate existing faces of uh, components. There are, there are several features that also exist at the part level that will do similar operations. Um, so let's just start with a, a simple example here. <clears throat> you know, let's say you, um, you'd like to you know, support this part to do some kind of manufacturing operation on it. And so you want to build up some, some supports here. So um, what I could do, I, I'm just going to go ahead and create additional features here in this part. Um, but there, uh, there's another technique that you could use is if I were to um, create a new part. And um, this, this is probably... I guess a better example of what um, what a typical workflow would be uh, would be to create a, a new part uh, for my support, and then you'd actually go to insert part, and um, find my rocker arm part. So I'm now <clears throat> bringing the uh, the existing part into this new part, and um, it's just uh, it's bringing in the geometry to be able to reference off of um, those uh, faces. So you can choose what you want to bring in: um, solid body, surface bodies, any of these other um, pieces of geometry or, or reference geometry. Um, you can also choose to immediately go into the move copy body 
tool um, to be able to locate the part properly in space. Um, you can also break the link to the original part if, um, if you didn't want to have a link that would automatically update between the new part and the original part. Uh, I'm just going to bring in the solid body. Okay, and um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just create some geometry here. Start with this face as just sort of an initial starting point for my sketch. And just going to do a simple circle. And... Oh. Make these concentric. Add a quick little dimension here. <clears throat> and then I'll do an extrusion. Uh, I'm going to uncheck merge result. I want this to be a, a separate body um, that I'm I'm going to uh, you know create just the support itself. And uh, we'll go on 25 millimeters in that direction. And then direction two, um, let's say I'll go not that far, something like that. Okay. that I'm not picking up any of that uh, billet. So let's do something like that. So I have two solid bodies here. And if we look, if I hide the, uh, the rocker, um, so you can see this, uh, right now it's just a, a solid cylinder. Um, but if I want to try to pick up uh, the face here of, um, the end of this arm. Um, so there's a nice tool that's available. If I go to insert uh, features and this indent tool. Um, so indent is, uh, is a nice tool. If I just go into the help here, um, you can see some examples of indent features. So it can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, this example of, of like packaging, I guess, is, is fairly similar to what you would use for, you know, like a support for fixturing. Um, it's really just going to be picking up uh, the existing faces of this part and um, just indenting or, or deforming the new part to match. Uh, and th this, I guess, is a kind of similar example as well. So you have... Um, like these three bodies, so uh, they're being used as a, a tool body to indent or deform um, the, the part that you're designing. Um, and uh, there's some other examples in here as well of, uh, of different techniques that you can use the indent feature for. Um, but in this case, so the target body is going to be just this new cylindrical uh, boss that I created. And the tool body region is uh, this one here. And um, if I choose to uh, do a cut, so it's really just going to be cutting the new body uh, by using the rocker arm as sort of a, you know, a cutting tool. And um, there's a clearance value. So I'm going to leave this, uh, actually, I'll, I'll set a clearance here. So like, just like I did before, I wanted to have a little bit of clearance around uh, the model. Um, so let me set this to two millimeters. And I'll click OK. Um, you can see I've got a, a gap here, that clearance that I set of two millimeters. Um, if we do a section cut, I'm just going to drag this over here. 
So you can see it, uh, it did a clearance all the way around uh, on every face. And um, maybe in this case, maybe I don't want to do that. Uh, I really wanted to reference directly off of the bottom face of the, the rocker arm. Um, I really just wanted a clearance around the outside, um, not, not on the bottom. <clears throat> so um, let me edit this indent feature. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so instead of doing a two millimeter clearance, I'll set this to zero. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> now if I go back to the section view, <clears throat> so <clears throat> obviously there's no clearance here anymore. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, so another technique that you could use is uh, <clears throat> going back to the uh, the offset surface command that we've seen before. And I'm just going to offset this outside face. I, like I said, I want to have a clearance there, uh, but not on the bottom face. And um, I'll do a, a two millimeter offset, uh, just like I did before. And now I'm going to hide uh, this body. And um, here's uh, another interesting technique that you might use in this situation is this replace face command. <clears throat> so replace face, I want to uh, replace this inside face, the original, uh, the original shape of the, the rocker arm. And I'll replace it with this new offset face or offset surface. So now when I do that, I, I can uh, either just hide this or, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could delete it uh, by going to uh, delete body. And I could just select that surface body and delete it if I wanted to, you know, remove it completely from the model. And now if I show the rocker arm and we do another section cut. So now you can see I've got, uh, I've got my offset or my clearance around the, uh, the outside, but the bottom face is uh, the same height as the original face of the rocker arm. Uh, so you can you know, use kind of a, a mixture of uh, sort of surface modeling techniques and uh, with the indent command to be able to get a result like that. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, take a look at another couple of examples. Um, so when I brought this in, uh, there was a, an option in here um, to start this again, insert part. Uh, uh, there was uh, there was an option. Uh, we'll take a look at it in a minute, but uh, actually, let's just do. Um, so let me do this again. Insert part, and uh, I'll take a look at something else here. Uh, but there's this option down here for the link, either to break the the link to the original part or not. And um, so if you if you break the link to the original part, um, then yeah, you're not gonna have it update if there are changes to the original part. So in that situation, you, yeah, you're gonna have to do some manual modeling in order to be able to, to match up with any updates. Um, if you don't check to break the link, um, so it will, it will have a link there. And um, I go back to this other part. So 
you can see there is actually an external reference from that insert part command because there's still that link there. So it, um, if I go to file, find references, you can see it is still referencing that original rocker arm part. Uh, so if there are changes to it, uh, it, uh, it will update um, this new model. Yeah. How long has that indent feature been available? Uh, I think indent's been around for a long time. You know, yeah, it's, it's been in there for... <laughs> so indent's been around for a while, but um, let's take a look at a, another command that's um, newer. Uh, I forget when it was added. I think it was added around 2014 or 2015 around there is the, um, the intersect feature. Uh, so I'll do the same thing I did before, insert part. And um, just going to drop this in. <clears throat> and uh, go ahead and just create some, a little block shape to act as a support. So I'm gonna create a new plane that's uh, offset from this. I... Let's make it a little further. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this new plane to uh, just create a little block. So I'll start a sketch and just uh, do a little rectangular shape. This, I'm not going to bother with really defining it right now, just some kind of uh, block shape. And I'm going to do an extrusion. And again, I'm going to uncheck merge results. I want this to be a separate body. And I'll do 50 millimeters the other way. Something like this. Make sure that looks right. So um, intersect uh, right here. You can also find this from insert uh, features and intersect. So like I said, this is, uh, it's only been around for a few years. Um, and it, it's actually a really uh, cool feature. Again, if I go into the help, um, you can see sort of a, another example of it where, um, uh, you're gonna kind of do the same thing as the indent, where you've got like a like a tool body sort of. Uh, in this case, you got a solid body and a surface body, and um, just by doing the intersect, it will actually uh, it'll remove some material from the solid. It'll also add some material to the solid, so it does both at the same time, and it'll give you uh, you know kind of like a combination of the two pieces of geometry, the surface body and the solid body. And, um, you know, wherever they, they intersect with each other, it's going to just kind of merge the geometry together. So it's actually, uh, it's a really uh, powerful tool um, that uh, also has a couple of other uh, functions to it. For example, if you had like a cavity like this where, um, uh, you know, it was completely surrounded by solid. Uh, the intersect tool could actually create a solid body uh, from that that empty cavity in the middle. Um, you can also you could measure internal volume if um, 
you know, you needed to know <laughs> how much uh, fluid or how much material could be held within some volume. So you can use the intersect tool for that as well. Uh, so it's a uh, it's pretty interesting uh, feature. Uh, but if we use it here, so I'll just um, select the two bodies that I want to intersect. And um, I'm going to choose uh, create both in this case uh, for create intersecting regions and create internal regions. And then I'll click intersect. And um, so I get sort of a, a similar interface to uh, what we saw before with, uh, with the cavity feature. Um, where I get a list of regions and I choose which ones I want to include, which ones I want to exclude. Um, so I want to exclude this. And um, uh, the rest of it uh, I'm going to keep. Uh, and then there's some um, options down here for uh, merging result or consuming surfaces. I'm just going to click OK for now. And um, you can see if we look at the um, solid bodies folder, uh, it's all one single body. Um, if we go back in and edit the intersect feature and I uncheck merge result, I click OK again. So now we have three separate bodies. And um, uh, so let me, first of all, let me just uh, hide this one here. That's actually the support body that I that I'm interested in creating. Uh, but if you if you look here, so it's what it actually did is it split the original body into two separate bodies, um, just uh, based off of where it intersected with the, the block that I created. Um, so this uh, it's, it doesn't really matter too much uh, for our purposes, whether the original body is, uh, or the original part is one body or two bodies. You know, you probably don't really care too much, but um, if you wanted to <laughs> merge it back together into a single body, you could do the like the technique that we saw before um, using the uh, combine. And I could just select these two and say add, and uh, now it's it's merged it back together into a single body. Uh, but if we hide this and I show the other one. Um, so you can kind of see uh, the, the shape that's been created from uh, the intersect tool. And, um, you know, I probably want to to go through and, uh, and remove these. Um, I think I could use the delete base command for that. Just like we saw before. So I should be able to just select these faces and say delete and patch. And so it just you know gets rid of that shape. Uh, I could do the same thing for the rest of them. Um, so you know you could use that technique with the intersect tool uh, to get a, a support that looks something like this. Um, any questions on the intersect tool before I move on to a different one? There's no broken optics. Yeah, right. With uh, so the question is, is if there's a built-in offset, uh, the intersect uh, command does not have have an offset uh, option. Uh, at least I don't think it did. I don't see anything in there. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, the intersect doesn't doesn't have anything like that. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, just going to suppress. Uh, those features uh, for the intersect. And uh, we can take a look at a, another um, option, which uh, we've, we've seen the combine tool a couple times. Um, we've seen it using the add operation to merge two bodies into one. 
You can also use combine to subtract. And in this case, uh, the main body would be this block and I wanna subtract um, the other body from it. So again, um, we're able to select uh, different bodies that we want to keep. And in this case, I just wanna keep this outer body. So I'll just check that box and click okay. And um, so this is a you know, similar uh, result to what we saw with the intersect command. Um, and again, I could go through with the you know, delete face tool and, and select these and uh, delete and patch. Uh, so combine is a, another feature that you could use for the same type of operation. Um, let me uh, suppress these and uh, take a look at something else. So yeah, if you wanted to you know, have an offset, um, what you would probably end up doing is, uh, again, using a little bit of, of surface uh, surface modeling and um, use that offset surface command just like we've seen before. And I could go through and just uh, select the faces that I want to offset. will be enough. Set your value for your offset. And just um, just going to adjust this shape a little bit just to Bring it back a little further so I don't have to select any other surfaces. <clears throat> and in this case, I had that, so I've got these surface bodies. <clears throat> And you could do something like this and just do um, uh, like a cut with surface um, or, you know, a couple different operations that I could do here. I could, uh, um, I could like thicken this. Thicken that surface body um, to the other side. So now I, you know, I could use this for um, the same type of stuff we saw before, combine or whatever, and and that would give me my my offset value from the original faces. Um, so uh, a few different techniques that you can use at the the part level as well. Um, the uh, the indent we saw, the intersect, combine. And um, then uh, just the last thing I want to talk about a little bit was um, design library. Uh, so this is over on the right side of the SolidWorks window here in the task pane, you'll see the design library. And um, the default design library uh, comes with um, a wide variety of, uh, of items in it. Um, but uh, you can always add things to the design library for um, uh, for use, you know, uh, reusing things again in the future. Uh, you just click Add to Library if you if you want to add a specific um, feature, or uh, you can see here feature sketches, blocks, uh, parts, or assemblies. Um, so any of those things can be added to the design library. You just select uh, where you want to save it, and um, and then later on, uh, you know, if you want to use anything from the design library, 
Uh, for example, if we go back to uh, one of these assemblies, and um, <clears throat> so I've like downloaded uh, some models here, and um, uh, I've got like some clamps here. If you wanted to, you know, use a, a clamp in your uh, model. From the design library, it's just a, a simple drag and drop uh, to bring it into in your assembly, and um, you know it's a, a great way to to reuse anything um, that you uh, might need to take advantage of again. Um, if you want to see the um, the file location for the design library, is here in your settings under file locations and uh, design library. So you could add a new location here if you, um, you know, if you already have a, a bunch of folders that you you have files in, you want to be able to access from the task pane here. You could do that, or you could just click Add File Location uh, to be able to um, do that as well. Just uh, you know, insert existing uh, folders into the design library. Um, so that is uh, that's everything that I want to show you guys today. Um, are there any other questions before we finish up? Uh, Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, uh, you know, if you're you're downloading hardware or fasteners or or whatever from like Mastercard or wherever you're getting them from, uh, what's the best way to deal with that? Um, and uh, yeah, I think the design library is is the best way to do that, um, or the quickest and easiest way to to be able to access those again in the future. Um, that's, you know, essentially what I did here, just, uh, downloaded some models and, um, yeah, I, I think the best way to get to them would be, uh, just dragging and dropping them in from the design library. Is that what you're asking? Or are you? Yeah, 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 I am. I, you know, just seeing if there's any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not even sure what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> You're you're wondering like is there anything else besides the design library that uh, that gives you something similar? Um, I feel like I'm essentially uploading them separately. Right. Yeah, as uh, yeah, as far as uh, you know, smart mating with uh, with downloaded um, files. Um, yeah, I mean, you might find that uh, it would be helpful to to create some additional references or you know, mate references or something like that. So, it might be some some manual operation that you might want to to do to downloaded files um, just to make them cleaner and easier to work with. Uh, and I mean, speaking of uh, cleaning up downloaded files, I, I've seen a lot of downloaded files that, um, you know, they've got extraneous geometry in them. They might have, you know, threads on a fastener or something like that, which just speaking from a, a performance standpoint, you'd probably want to clean those up, remove the threads or, you know, remove any geometry that you don't actually need uh, before you save it into the design library. Anything else? Any other questions? Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to uh, to join us here or online. Uh, 
really appreciate you uh, allowing us the opportunity to talk to you today about SolidWorks and uh, look forward to working with you guys in the future on any, any of your SolidWorks needs. Thanks. Yeah.